Hello, Professor Hildebrandt here. This is the second part of the Chapter 5 lecture. This one is going to focus on the probability rules of addition and the probability rules of multiplication. So here um, with the rules of addition, we're looking at the probability that any two or more events might occur. Um, first, we're going to look at what's called the special rule of addition, and this one is used um, for experiments where our events are mutually exclusive. So again, what does this mean? This means that if event A occurs, event B cannot occur at the same time. Um, and this is your formula for finding the special rule of addition. We just add the probability of event A occurring to the probability of event B occurring. And this Venn diagram is, is basically just showing that, that events A, B, and C are all mutually exclusive. There's no overlap here. Um, we'll have a Venn diagram in a moment where I show you what happens when that's not the case. All right, so first we're going to probability of A occurring. And so there are um, one is, um, I'm gonna try to draw this again. This not always the easiest to do. So there's 100 um, here and out of that total of 4,000. Okay, so you guys just can kind of pretend with me maybe that that looks like 4,000. <laughs> um, and so that probability would come out to this 0 0.025, okay? And then we'll look at C, and for C it's 300. So we'll have the 300 um, possible outcomes there, um, also divided by the total number of packages that were in our sample, the 4,000. And so then we get the probability of the package being overweight at 0 0.075. So adding them together, we finally see that the probability that a particular package is either underweight or overweight is equal to 0.1. The complement rule um, can also be an effective tool to use. Um, and sometimes it's really useful because it might be easier to calculate the probability of an event happening by simply determining the probability of it not happening. Um, and, and so that's, <coughs> sorry guys, that's all this rule is saying here. Um, and so we could use the complement rule to again find out if, what the probability is of the package being either overweight or underweight. And so that would mean we subtract the probability of B happening, because if B happens, then that's the absence of, of any error, right? So we take this 3,600, we divide by that total 4,000, um, and we would get a probability that the package is right on target um, at 0.9, subtract that from 1, and again, then we get that same final probability that our package is either over or underweight of 0.1. So the second rule of addition is called the general rule of addition. And the way, the reason this one is different um, is because our events are not mutually exclusive. Um, we have what is called joint probability. Um, it's a probability that measures the likelihood that two or more events are going to happen concurrently. So now looking at this Venn diagram, you know, the purple over here was um, event A occurring, the green was uh, event B occurring, but then right here in the middle, this kind of um, coral color, is where A and B both happen. Um, and so this is a matter of joint probability, and so now we have to adjust our formula slightly. So we're still gonna look at the probability of A, and we're gonna add to that the probability of B occurring, but now we have this new piece. We are going to subtract out the probability that both A and B occurred. Why? Because we want to avoid double counting. Looks at the rules of multiplication, and the rules of multiplication are applied when two or more events occur simultaneously. Um, and so first we'll look at the special rule of multiplication, and here our events are independent. And what does this independence mean? Um, it means that the occurrence of one event has absolutely no effect on the probability of the other happening at all. Um, and so here the uh, AAA looks at its members and hey, 60% of you made airline reservations last year. 
um, if we select two members at random, what's the probability that they both made an airline reservation? Well, these members don't know each other. They don't travel together. So, you know, John booking an airline reservation has no impact or effect at all on Sally booking an airline reservation. Um, and so for this one, we would use the special rule of multiplication and we just take the probability that one made the reservation, multiply it the, the, times the same probability for the second to get um, the probability that two of them, and that would be this uh, 0.36 here. Okay. Um, but what if our events are not independent? So now we have what's called the general rule of multiplication and we have what's called a conditional probability. And so a conditional probability is the likelihood that an event will happen because another event has already happened. So there is a relationship here. Um, these events are not independent. We call them dependent um, because the value of the other is conditional or dependent on what happened in our first event. Um, and so here's your rule then, <clears throat> the formula for the general rule of multiplication, so the conditional probability um, of B given A. So let's do an example to try to make this make more sense. Um, so we got this golfer with 12 shirts in his closet, and nine of them are white, and the other three are blue. And he gets dressed in the dark, so he just grabs his shirt, puts it on, doesn't know what color it is. Um, let's suppose he plays golf two days in a row, he does not return any worn shirts to the closet. And so we want to find the probability that both shirts that the golfer wears for day one and day two are both white shirts. So to do this, um, first we calculate the probability that his shirt on day one is white. And so that's this 9 over 12 here. Um, well, there's 12 total shirts in the closet, right? We're told up here, 12 shirts, and 9 of these are white. So the probability is 9 over 12. And then we're going to multiply this, so that's multiplying there, times the probability of what's going to happen on day two. Well, again, we're assuming this is asking for what's the probability that both shirts. So we're assuming that day one he selected white. Now what's the probability that he'll again select white on day two? Well, so of those nine white shirts, we have to subtract one. And so there's only eight possible white shirts in his closet. And instead of 12 total shirts, he's not returning that dirty shirt. So there's only 11. So with the probability we multiply times is eight over 11. And so the probability that our golfer will wear a white shirt both days is 0.55. And this is how we use the general rule of multiplication. Um, once again, I'm going to uh, on my iPad, work out a couple of basic examples um, where I show you how to do these calculations using the rules of probability. So please look for those as well.